Hello, this is Rax Emilius. Ah, the poor donkey. <laughs> I meant to put uh, glow ink on that sign before I recorded the end of the last episode, but I've done it now. The poor donkey. Ah, he will be missed. He was a love donkey. A beast of burden that will never be forgotten. Ah, anyways, let's get moving on uh, what we're doing today. We've got just a couple things to update you on. It's going to be a quick intro today. Got some of the glow frames from the glows inks, the glow sacks that we got. So I started throwing some of them on here on the item frames. I love those glow ones. Uh, I haven't had a problem with lag yet on the, the any of my worlds So with these glowing frames. So I'm just going to keep plopping them up until I run into trouble. But uh, yeah, so we got that. One other thing we did, I did was uh, I made pink collar for Taylor. Our dog had a pink collar, so you just get a pink dye, right click on the dog, and that changes the collar color. So she's all set to go when we're ready to, to build up the dog house. And uh, lastly, we have, uh, oh, I moved the portal. So <laughs> you can probably hear my phone clunking on the table. Uh, I have a list. I just like to have lists, <laughs> lists of stuff to talk about. Uh, moved the portal from up there. You can see the hole over there. I just moved it right over there. We can start heading over that way. As you can see, I've I've just done like kind of a bottom layer on the sugarcane farm that I have designed. But uh, yeah, I just moved it over here. I it's too far away. It messed up the portal. So the inside the nether portal is the same. But then when I come out of the portal, look at yeah yeah. I think that's it right up there. You can see it up there. It created a portal for me, so it came up there. I'm not going to deal with it because that's not my final spot for the portal, so I don't want to deal with it right now. I'll just fix it once uh, we find the final spot. So, yeah, so this is the final, the, I'm sorry, the, the bottom layer of kind of the way my sugar cane farm is going to look. So I've got a, a little video that I made that kind of shows you the inner workings of a normal sugar cane farm, so we'll get to that right now. Here is your run-of-the-mill sugarcane farm. I This is as old as Minecraft, pretty much. I don't know who designed this. I don't think that I have to give credit to anybody. Oh, there's the, there's the build, by the way, the old one. I'm, I'm in my uh, canvas world here, so behind me is the sugarcane farm we're actually building, but I wanted to make this mock-up so you can kind of see what's going on with the sugarcane farm. There's two parts to it. There's the sugarcane growing and uh, and harvesting part up here. And then this is the uh, delivery system to a chest, basically down here. So the way this works is the water has to be here. Like usually you'd have a trough. So you'd have the it coming out here and coming out here. The water doesn't have to fall out, but there's a trough of water in there. So the sugarcane can be planted. And then once it grows, it'll grow up to two like that. And then once it gets to the third one, it's gonna the observer is gonna notice something's different up here. Send a redstone signal out the back end, and it's gonna power this uh, piston here. And then it, the item drops down to here. So the the delivery system down here. This is a minecart hopper, and the, it sits on a rail here. It's in between the uh, hopper here and the minecart there so there's the rail there and it sits up high it doesn't look like it but it sits up so it goes right into the bottom of this block so minecart hoppers this is a, a redstone key here are able to suck items through this block so in a regular design this is one module in a regular design you'd have however many you want you could have a thousand if you want just back to back to back or however you want to design it but the, the minecart will be going back and forth. And when it swoops through here, it'll just pick up the, the items. You didn't just see that, did you? Uh, I hope not. Anyways, <laughs> you may have seen the build over there. Oh, if it's anything, it's just the corner of it. Anyways, uh, so yeah, so then it, uh, it you send it over the rail and underneath the ra one of the rails or two of the rails, whatever, there's a hopper and it'll deposit the sugar cane into that hopper and then the hopper sends it into a chest. So as you can see, we got two from the two we put on there. So we put one, two, boom, and it'll come down here. Obviously, I, you normally wouldn't put the sugarcane on there. It just grows naturally. 
So when it grows naturally up to there, it goes into here. I use uh, blocks here. I, I use glass. You want to see all what's going on in the farm. So glass blocks. If you use panes, it doesn't work as well because the item can get stuck like right here because the pane would be just right in the middle there. So it gets stuck in the middle. So I use a full block uh, for this type of build. So anyways, that's a, a pretty generic sugarcane farm. I know there's a design out too that I've seen that the observer goes underneath and when this grows, it changes the status of this and the observer sees the status change. I tried it here, but I couldn't get it to work. So I just went with the old school one. I don't know if the one I'm talking about here was a Java edition one or not, but anyways, there you go. There's your, your basic module for a sugarcane farm. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed that little introduction to sugarcane farms. If you're a seasoned veteran of Minecraft, it's probably a little boring. Sorry about that. But uh, it's nice to explain kind of how that stuff works uh, when you're new to Minecraft. It really, stuff like that helped me out when I was uh, a new Minecrafter. So some people would still say I'm new. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so I'm going to uh, take you through this real quick. Like I said, this is the bottom layer. You can probably see up there, there's some rails. So like in the tutorial, the rails are beneath the uh, beneath the grass that the sugarcane sits on. So that's kind of my layer for the rails to come across. It's going to go straight. Uh, not not straight across there, but kind of follow this out a little bit and then back in again. So anyway, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to build another layer or two. Uh, and when it's a good time to cut back in and show you the progress, I'll do that. So we'll see you then. So I've done a few things here. I got the minecart track laid out. So this layer of dirt here is where the sugar cane is going to go on top of. I've also laid out the trough for the water back behind there. I'll show you that in a second. But here's the, the minecart going back and forth. I used a mine st a redstone blocks to power the, the rails. These are powered rails here, which accelerate the, the minecart. These are just the regular rails. Here you can see the hoppers that it will deposit the uh, sugar cane into once it sucks the sugar cane down through there like we were talking about. So we'll head down here quick. Wow, I didn't hear a splash. <laughs> uh, that was weird. So I got a line of hoppers. So the, the simple version is just one hopper going into a chest. Well, I wanted to make sure there was a couple of places for the minecart to dump the sugar cane into. So there's hoppers going down here, underneath and over to our chest here. And then also on this side, same thing. So the nice part is, you know... A lot of times you do a double chest or something like that to make sure there's enough storage. But if this fills up, it's going to back up sugarcane into all these hoppers. So when I pull something out of this one, it's just going to filter right back in. So I'm not too concerned about it. There's going to be plenty of sugarcane to go around. So I like to make them, I don't make the most efficient farms possible. I like to just have fun with them and make them pretty good. But I don't really get too ticky tacky on how it's going to... Uh, how efficient it's going to be. So there's that minecart going back here. Now, when it gets to a powered rail on with a block next to it, and that rail is powered, it's just going to bounce it back off of that. If this a rail was not powered, so if I took this redstone block out and it was just an unpowered powered rail, then it would stop right there. So you can use redstone to, to fiddle around with, with minecarts and things like that uh, using that. So we'll do that for a, another farm at some point, I'm sure. But uh, up here is the trough I was telling you about. So the water is going to go in here. And this is where the sugar cane is going to go, right here. So we want to make sure <laughs> to cover that. Let's do that right now before we put water in. There we go. <laughs> Get water uh, going down through our rails. That wouldn't be good. So this is going to be the water trough. And that's as far as I've gotten so far. Uh, you can see pillaring up. I wish I had some bamboo to make some scaffolding, but... So that's how it's looking. It's obviously going to look way nicer than this. It's not going to be just a bunch of dirt and everything. But uh, I wanted to get the basics of the farm down. And then I just kind of start covering up the pieces that I don't want to see. So obviously we'll pull blocks in front of that and, and you'll see. But uh, yeah, so there's the update for now. All right. It's starting to come together. It's starting to take shape. You can kind of see what's going on here a little bit. Uh, obviously, all the decorations aren't up and everything, but uh, I got most of the redstone done, so I'll show you that real quick. 
Uh, from here, you can see I've got uh, some observers. I've got four on the whole build. There's not one on the other side. This one here is for a specific reason I'll get into over here, but uh, I'll, uh, let's go take a look behind and see what we got going. I covered up the water. The water is underneath the oak planks, the bottom oak planks. So the water, you can hear it still, but you can't... Uh, you can't see it at all, and it's not. I'll explain that. Oh, <laughs> I'll explain that redstone in a second. But uh, yeah, so here we are, the observers. So the sugar cane will be here when it uh, grows up to three tall. The observer will see it, and it'll activate not only this piston, but if we look behind here, is there a way to get behind there from right here? <laughs> Let's just do this. There we go. Uh, these are all connected by the redstone dust behind here. So when, and this one's wrong. <laughs> Good thing I caught that. Uh, the observer, it has to be up one, so then it'll go up and over. Let's dig this out here. And uh, yeah, it'll connect uh, all these pistons. So again, with the efficiency thing, it's not it, the most efficient farm would be to have an observer at every one. So when all of the sugar cane grow. When one of them grows to three tall, it takes care of it. But this one, when this one grows to three tall, it'll fire off uh, a good amount of these pistons. So I consider that good enough. And it just saves on resources. And I think this looks a little bit nicer having the planks in here instead of an observer. An observer. So yeah, that's here. I'm running out of light, but uh, real quick, back here I put in a system. If I wanted to use bone meal to get a lot of sugar cane at once, that's what this is for. This is a dispenser, so you'd put uh, bone meal in here. And I just made one of those clocks, the same thing as the clock underneath there, just to make a blinky, right? So it's blinking here. I put a lever on the front, so now it's on, so it's not working. But if you flip the lever, not sure if you can hear that, but now it's working. So it'll bone meal the sugar cane that grows right in front of it, so on this one right here. And when it grows up to three tall, it's going to fire the pistons. So that's a good little way just to add a little extra to my sugarcane farm. If I get some bone meal and want a bunch of a bunch of sugarcane, I can use this same farm. It's all integrated together. The minecart's going to come back and pick it up and go deposit it in the chest down there. Now, the it doesn't. it's not going to deposit it super quick. Uh, hoppers take a little while for items to filter through, but uh, it's good enough. Like I said, not the most efficient, but... It's uh, something I enjoy, just uh, adding this little touch to your to your build. And it's getting dark, so I'm going to... There's our stupid portal up there. Jeez, what are you doing up there? <laughs> I went through that one, went to the normal one, and then it went. It <laughs> teleported me back here when I came back out. Twice. I thought, oh, maybe it'll fix it next time. Twice. <sighs> I'll fix it later. Anyways, uh, I'm going to go to bed before a creeper jumps down and kills me. So here it is so far. I like it. Uh, this is intentional here. That's a little sneak peek, but I'm almost there. I haven't done much to it other than just put more of these building blocks in. Uh, I think I put the glass in from the last update. So I put the glass in. Wandering trader. Be right back. Nothing. All right, the cactus was nice. Nothing. We want, we want jungle wood uh, saplings. We want cocoa beans. I don't even know if they're available from the sky. But that's what we want. Cocoa beans and jungle wood. Please, sir. Next time you head around here, bud, please. Cocoa beans and jungle wood. I don't think you have glowberries. Glowberries would be amazing, too. Thank you. You heard me. You heard me. That's what I want next time. Also, if you can hear me from down here, please, bamboo. Bamboo as well, sir, next time. Take it easy on your llama, would you? Holy cow. Take it easy on that guy. All right, where were we? Glass blocks. We have these blocks here, variation, obviously. This is, again, this is, the minecart's going to be covered. I'm not done with this. But 
I think I'm going to finish it so the next time you see it, it's all done. I don't want to give too much away before uh, before uh, you see the final product, so it's more fun as like a reveal type of thing. So, yeah. Let's do it. Well, the build is done. Just off to the left. But there's a couple things I want to talk about quick before we go over there. Uh, first of all, I ran out of deep slate so i went down into the mines and uh down there while i was digging up some of that deep slate, deep slate i found some diamonds so i dug those up They're right by the entrance of the mine <laughs> so you never know where you're gonna find those things obviously so uh, i found those uh down right by the entrance of the mine just digging up some extra deep slate i needed for the build but uh also we found, or I found, a wandering trader. He did not bring us what we asked for, but he did bring us this. Dripstone. So for the dripstone, there, this is a dripstone block. So he sells this piece. And for the dripstone block, you need four of these. So I bought enough for the four to make the block. And then I bought another one, a fifth one, for the piece that goes below it and in order to farm this up so there was already a piece down there so in order for it to grow it needs the block and the dripstone piece and then it'll start growing from there it'll grow up there and down here so harvest that up and there's water right above the dripstone block there so surrounded by dirt water up there but another thing i wanted to do quick because there's actually one more thing i want to do with the build and that is get some azalea leaves. So I wanted to show you this real quick together before I did that on my own. So this is the moss block we bought from the Wandering Trader a few episodes ago. You bone meal it, and look at that. There's so many blocks this one moss block creates. Moss carpet, azalea bush, azalea bush, flowering azalea bush, we're gonna need that right now. Another azalea bush, more moss carpet. So. There's a bunch in here. It turns whatever block you have below it. I don't think it works on cobble, but it turns whatever. So this is all dirt. It turns, I think, even like andesite and regular stone and stuff. It turns into these moss blocks. So now we have a whole bunch of moss blocks, and we can use that to make mossy cobble and all that type of stuff. So what I want to do real quick, too, is grab our flowering azalea and some bone meal because I want some of the azalea leaves. So there's that, then you bone meal that, and now you get this tree. So I'm not gonna knock it all down here. I just wanna grab a couple of these and then we'll be on our way. But I like these flowering azalea leaves. They add a lot to the build. So this is just oak, uh, oak wood. So I'll come back after the episode's done and mine all this up, but I'm keeping my head down on purpose, keeping my head down. And here it is, the finished product. Uh, I like it. There's maybe maybe just a little bit too much variation in this one. Is that possible? Too much variation? <sighs> but it's kind of my mind entrance, too. I wanted to do a combination thing here. So some of the things that I've uh, really enjoyed, and if it's not night before we're done talking about this, then then I'll uh, let it come tonight and, and cut in and, and show you this at night because it's pretty cool. But uh, yeah, this was pretty bulky in this area. I was using full blocks right there and there. So I took those out, made those stairs to kind of slim it down and then just use trap doors instead just to keep it slimmer. It was getting pretty chunky right in there. So this is the entrance to the mine. Uh, I'm gonna put some of these flowering azaleas right in here. So let's do that one and that one. Boom, boom, boom. Right. Oh, come on, there. There and there. Just to add a little bit of a little bit of niceness down here. I intentionally didn't put glowstone behind these because that looks really nice. I like when there's glowstone behind the leaves. That looks really cool. But I did some uh, color lighting down here. So I wanted it just a little bit darker in this area. And you'll see at night it looks pretty neat. So I also like the idea of these waterfalls coming down. That's where the water comes out from behind the, the sugarcane farm. Uh, I don't know if I can get up there quick. I had to do a little trick though, because on the other, I like it this way anyways, but I put a slab there 
and then I waterlogged the slab. So it's not actually the same water coming out, but it's the same spot it would have come out if I would have just left it. But the other side, I needed the slab there for the uh, for the repeater for that uh, bone meal deal I was talking about, uh, dispenser. So uh, another thing that I like, obviously, glow lichen all around it. Not a ton of it, but I like this idea was the redstone blocks I was using for the rails. If you put these uh, uh, oak trapdoors on them, it really glows nice through there. It kind of looks more evilish than anything, but uh, I really liked that. Upstairs, we got the the glowstone. I put green and then some purple glass up there. I think with RTX, in fact, I'm 99% sure with RTX, the light looks dimmer in RTX with the with this colored glass, but it still follows the rules as if it were uh, a full transparent block so don't have to worry about mobs in there or anything like that so let's see what else uh do we got we got our let's try that let's give this a shot i haven't i haven't even tried it yet so i hope it works i hope i can even get up there yeah perfect so i don't need to build a staircase or anything which is great so i'm gonna put this bone meal in here we only have seven bone meal right now i got more but so let's you can't see it from here but when i flip this switch the whole bunch of pistons should go off uh, and a bunch of sugar cane will go down to the 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 chest down there. So, yep, you can see it a little bit in there. You saw a little bit of it, I'm sure. Yep, and there it got sucked up. So we'll turn that off, and then we'll go downstairs. Uh, some vines here and there. Another thing that I did too. Let's see if I can go up there, which you'll see at night. Is I left the glowstone that shines through the glass below. I left it open. It actually looks kind of cool. It shines light up onto this as well. So I did that. Look, the variation, you know, these tough blocks maybe were too much, but uh, tough blocks, um, deep slate bricks, regular stone bricks, some deep slate cobble. So a lot of variation. Some cracked slate, cracked bricks. I may have gone a little overboard on the, <laughs> the variation on this one, but... I don't know. I think it's good. We'll just uh, go with what we got. And, uh, yeah, so there's the finished product. I think I covered everything that I wanted to show you. But, uh, yeah, so I'll be right back when it gets to be nighttime. So here it is at night. I really like this thing at night. I wish this was just a smidge brighter in there, but I really like this. I like the redstone, how it glows behind those trap doors. There's the green light underneath here. And then that white glow above that I was telling you about by leaving the the glowstone exposed. And the other thing that's nice is that mobs won't spawn on the roof because I left it exposed as well. But I like that backlighting there. And uh, then, of course, the glow lichen here and there. I really like this build. I think it's really coming together. The spider's coming down to check it out. He likes it. He's like, whoa, what do you got going there? What's this now? A sugarcane farm? Yeah, right on, man. So, yeah, let's go take just a little closer look. Close that gate. It's nighttime. It's nighttime. Got to be careful. So, yeah, there, there's that glow underneath there, the green. <laughs> Got to be careful for creepers. I am not kidding. I was working. Oh, oh, Jesus. Oh, baby. Oh, get out of here. Oh, get out of here. I was working right there. I turned and there was a creeper right next to me and I just jumped in the water and he must have just gotten in the water right before he exploded. He did no damage. He was, I swear, he was right there. I was like, what? And jump. Oh my gosh, so close. Anyways, yeah, so this is the closer look. So here's the green light under here. I really like this. It really adds to it. And oh, the other thing I didn't explain either is that you know, the water's going to come down here, obviously. I'm going to probably terraform this up a little bit more, but, you know, and then it flows back in. So I, this is an empty block under here. Let's see how bright it is. Yeah. So this isn't anywhere near done. The water flows in here. I think I'm going to do a three wide staircase and have the water turn and go down the staircase on the sides. So that is definitely next episode, but that, I think that's what I'm going to do. So next episode, I am going to uh, do more of the terraforming around here. 
do the paths. I'm going to build that diagonal bridge too, I think, in the next episode. Just kind of pull this whole area together. And depending on how much time, this is going to be pretty boring to see once I design it. But I might build this staircase down so it's all set. This is done. We're not doing another thing here. Uh, I don't know what we're going to do with it, but we're not doing it right there. So I'm going to transform this area and, and make it super nice. I think that's in the next episode. So I'm going to say goodbye from here. And we're going to see you in the next episode. I hope everybody has a great day and everybody stays safe. Take care.